Now, continuing with basic RTL constructs, let's look at the timer, frequency divider, and oscillator. To begin, let's consider a timer that, when enabled, will count n clock cycles and then stop. It should also indicate when it's finished. This allows some other system controller, in particular, to know when a certain number of clock cycles has elapsed. I'll form a basic down counter where I have a register called T that decrements by one on each clock cycle. I could have used an up counter as well. Now at some point I'll need to fill the register with the actual number of clock cycles to count, so I'll fill it with N. And I want it to stop at some point, so that way, so I want it to stay uh, parked at zero. Now let's imagine a signal called start that when that's enabled it sends the value in into the register. If start is not active then we should be using one of the other two register transfer statements. Whenever the register in, in fact is zero, so I'll notate this as t identically equal to zero that's the double equals sign there. When it's identically equal to zero, we stay at zero. However, if it is not equal to zero, then we should be doing the decrement operation. All right, that gives us the behavior that we need, everything that we need except for the final indicator. I'll express this as an output signal called done which is equal to the result of comparing the register contents to zero. So again, the expression maybe looks a little odd here, but the equals by itself indicates a freestanding operator. The double equals means that I'm comparing the register contents against zero. And so that evaluation is either true or false. And that's what gets sent to the output called, D, uh, output called done. Well, let's take a look at the VI called Basic RTL Constructs. And that implements a variety of registers and counters and so forth. Here's a section associated with the timer that we just designed. This one in particular counts 30 cycles. So I'm using N equals 30. Here I'm comparing it against zero to make the decision about whether or not to feed in a zero or T minus one, and I'm also indicating my output. Let's go ahead and run this. And we see that the register is at zero right now, so timed out is active. If I start it, it fills the register with the value 30. Now as long as I hold start timer active, we won't see any change because it's continually sending 30 into our register. As Soon as I release the signal called start timer, we see that it counts down towards zero. We see the indicator and then we also see that it stops at zero. Now a closely related structure to this type of timer is a frequency divider. This structure is intended to pulse an output for one cycle every n cycles. We won't need the start signal here, and we won't need this capability to stay parked at zero. We only need these two register transfer statements. Uh, since I'm using the down counter technique, we say any time the register reaches zero, we refill it with the value in. Otherwise, we do a decrement by one. Now our output indicator will go active any time that the register, in fact, is zero. All right, same VI as we were looking at a moment ago. 
Let's go ahead and run that. And we'll take a look at the frequency divider located here. So again, all of this is implementing the register transfer statements. And let's go ahead and try the initial value that I have set here, which is 30. And note that this counts down towards zero, goes active for one cycle, and then refills with 30. If I decrease this value significantly, Now we see that it fills with four and then pulses more rapidly. So frequency divider is, is useful for enabling other structures that need to be able to operate more slowly than the clock rate. And real briefly, we can look at an oscillator structure. This is based on a register defined with a Boolean data type. So it effectively is only one bit. The not gate gives us the feedback necessary to cause the stored value to oscillate back and forth. Fairly simple, but also fairly useful structure as well.